morning and welcome to worship. It is good to be together in the spirit. A few announcements as we begin. Uh, first, the deacons will be meeting on Wednesday at 7 p.m. at their regular time on Zoom. Um, and the Joys and Concerns chats are continuing Tuesday, Tuesday Wednesday, and Thursday at 3 p.m. But uh, as the situation has changed and people are cooped up a little more by popular demand, I'll be having one Tuesday evening at 7 also in case anyone would like to come on Zoom for just vir virtual conversation, a devotional, some time being together. And then there's another announcement for youth group before we begin. I'll make a brief announcement just about uh, all children CE. Um, given the uptick in COVID cases and just the general illnesses that are going around, um, we have decided to take all of the children CE back online for the time being. Um, and so uh, what that means for Sunday school is that I will continue to send the at-home lesson guidance with the video. Um, the, the, it's a one-page PDF that kind of guides you through. It um, has um, a link to the video and some questions about the video, which are just straight out of the uh, world leader guide. Um, so it's sort of like watch the video, engage your kids in conversation about the video. And then there's a two page, very brief Bible story from the children's picture Bible uh, that goes with the curriculum and a couple of questions about the Bible story. Um, I would anticipate that um, if you were to do the whole thing, it probably would take you no longer than 15 to 20 minutes, and five of that would be the video. Um, I am set to go to send those out for the entire month of January. I have been doing it for a couple of months now, and my plan is to sort of survey parents at the end of that, towards the end of that time period, to see if this is something you guys are interested in continuing to do. Um, as we have had fairly low attendance even when we were having in person. Um, or if it's something that you're not interested in, then I'm open to other suggestions as well. So if you have suggestions or you want to let me know that you're actually using this uh, and you want me to continue, please uh, feel free to just reply to the email or shoot me an email um, and then I'll, I'll try and kind of put out a more formal survey towards the end of January. So if you can, at least try it in the month of January, and then you'll be able to answer the survey uh, more helpfully. Uh, any feedback is welcome at any time. Uh, for youth group, we have youth group today, but it will be virtually on Discord, on the youth group Discord server. Uh, I'm fairly certain that all of the youth that um, are going to see this probably have already been on the youth group Discord server, but if you need help getting back on because you haven't been on in a few months, or if you haven't been on before, or you need it on a new device or whatever, feel free to contact Ben and I anytime this afternoon between now and youth group. Youth group will meet starting at four o'clock and we'll have some uh, virtual fun and then we'll have a lesson um, and then maybe um, you know some more gaming or whatever um, as people want to stay on and do things. Um, we are planning on doing it this way for the foreseeable future in the hopes that when the weather gets better again, we can maybe meet outside again and um, or have more outside time than we were able to have the last few months. Um, if anyone has any questions or concerns or suggestions about youth group, also feel free to reach out to me uh, or any youth group leader um, and we're happy to answer those or try and address those in the, the group of leadership. Um, and then we will have, uh, hopefully, an adult CE program coming uh, in February. I'm still working on the details of that, but I'll get that out and get it into the bulletin uh, as soon as possible. Thank you.
Please rise as you are able and join me in the call to worship that's printed in the bulletin. We have life because God created it. Life, life had, had its beginning, beginning in God. God. We need not fear the end of life. In God, God it, it will come, come to completion, completion and its meaning will, will be fully revealed. revealed. All creation, including us, will find fulfillment in God. Now, now we, we see in part, then we shall, shall see face to face. face. Let us worship God, who is the creator of life and the victor over death. Please join in singing the opening hymn, What Star Is This, with beams so bright, uh, also found printed in the bulletin. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. You chose to become one of us in Jesus Christ, sharing our joys and sorrows, displaying your greatness in the child of the manger. We praise you for your amazing love, great enough to embrace the expanding universe, yet close enough to enter our humble hearts. During this time of worship, surprise us with your grace once again that we, with the whole church and your precious creation, may praise and honor your holy name. O oh God, our creator, redeemer, and sustainer. Amen.
the birth of Jesus Christ, God became like us so that we can become like him. And so confessing our sins before God, let us come to God in humility and in gratitude. Let us pray. God of goodness and guidance, in Christ you sent us light to live by, yet we seek shadows in which to hide. In him you promise new life, but we prefer old habits, nursing grievances and clinging to familiar opinions. You are generous with your love, but we reject neighbors and fear strangers who differ from us. Remake us in the image of your son with your mercy and teach us how to follow him in the year ahead. Here is the good news of the gospel. Jesus Christ is God's elect, chosen for our salvation. In him we find God's acceptance. Let us give thanks to God for this gift and be at peace with ourselves and one another. Thanks be to God. journey of the Magi to greet Christ, the newborn king. They brought gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Our gifts are not so exotic, but what we offer today and throughout the year honors Jesus as Lord of our lives and Savior of the world. Let us pray. God of majesty, majesty and, and mystery, we bring, bring our gifts to you, grateful that you are with us in good times and hard times. We do not know what the year ahead will hold, but your, but your love shines like a star to guide us. Bless these gifts that they may keep the light of Christ shining through the church to offer the world truth and wisdom, healing and hope in Jesus' name. Amen. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for your guidance, for your presence, for your word. Help us to hear what it is that you are saying to each of us today and to be healed and changed by it. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning's first reading is from Isaiah, chapter 60, verses 1 through 6. Arise, shine, for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise among you, and his glory will appear over you. 
Nations shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from far away and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you and the young camels of Midian and Ephah and all those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and proclaim the praise of the Lord. Thus ends the first reading. The second reading comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 2, the first 12 verses. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and called Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. This too is God's word to us. As a child, when I was first introduced to the very idea that not everyone speaks English and foreign languages are a thing, I originally thought of them more like secret codes than completely different ways of communicating. I imagined all the words being lined up in exactly the same order that we would line them up and each one just swapped out for a completely identical alternative. So it was a rude awakening when I started actually taking classes and learned that there is much, much more to it than that. So that sometimes other languages have words with a nuance of meaning that can't be captured in any one single English word. Supposedly, the related languages of Norway, Sweden, and Finland have between 180 and 300 words for snow, snow conditions, tracks in the snow, and other ice and snow related concepts. I'm so grateful not to live in a place with enough inclement weather to require such precision. Latin generally puts the verb at the end of the sentence, while we tend to put it in the middle. And nouns and verbs alike get a wide range of different endings that you have to memorize, depending on how they function in a sentence. And singular and plural you are not the same, which is inconvenient. Such complexity is common among different languages. And translation only gets trickier and trickier when dealing with ancient languages that aren't spoken in their current forms anymore like Biblical Hebrew and Biblical Greek, both. So it's pretty common for scholars to run across words in ancient texts. I have to do some digging to sort out what exactly they would mean in English because there's not a clean and tidy one-to-one -one overlay. And in the Bible, one of the best ways to do that is to look at all the other times that that Greek or Hebrew word is used in the Bible and to consider what they were talking about there. The other really good way to do it is to consider if the word was related to a similar word from other ancient Near Eastern languages 
and texts. Both of these methods of gaining insight come heavily into play when we meet these mysterious travelers from the East. In the biblical Greek, these magi in Matthew 2. The beloved Christmas carol calls them kings, but that doesn't actually come out of Matthew 2. It's drawing imaginatively from this morning's passage from Isaiah. There's a word for king in biblical Greek, of course, but that's not what shows up here. If we look at how the word magi is used in the rest of the New Testament, which is the part of the Bible that's in ancient Greek, and how it's related to a similar word in another ancient Near Eastern language, we get a different picture that's not really the same as kings. The only other times we meet magi in the New Testament, they are magicians or sorcerers, and the word is used pejoratively. In Acts 8, Simon the sorcerer amazed people with his magic and tried to pay off the Apostle Paul to give him the power to give people the Holy Spirit, and it did not go well for him. In Acts 13, Bar-Jesus is called a false prophet, and the apostle Paul called him a child of the devil and an enemy of everything that is right. And then Paul blinded him, at least temporarily, as punishment for what he had been up to. Similarly, the word magi itself seems to be derived from a similar word in ancient Persian, which makes sense since those visitors were coming from the east. Over there, in their culture at that time, it was used to refer to Zoroastrian fire priests who supposedly used powerful incantations to control the gods. For me then, although it would be kind of cool to have foreign kings showing up at the manger, and that's what we tend to do when we dress the children up for pageants because crowns and bling are cool, The word from Matthew 2 is even more amazing and more beautiful and more revolutionary and delightfully, deliciously scandalous. It's another reminder of God's tendency to turn things upside down and God's willingness and eagerness to include those that we would rather not or wouldn't expect. God sending a special sign to these strangers is a reminder that you don't have to be a king to spot the star. God was willing to speak to these guys, God is willing certainly to speak to us. If they were worthy, certainly we are worthy. At the same time, the Magi's example offers us this subtle invitation to listen, subtle invitation to pay attention, subtle invitation to be willing to change how we think about things or to do something new. All the more if they were not kings, but sorcerers and priests of another faith. God put a star in the sky and the Magi had every reason to ignore it or to discount it or to explain it away. God put a star in the sky and the Magi had busy lives of their own in their own country. They had plans, they had careers, maybe they had families. They could have been so wrapped up in other things that they didn't notice or didn't care. They could have paid attention to the other stars, which I'm sure were also very nice, or to other things entirely. God put a star in the sky and Bethlehem was mighty far away, far enough away that they had never been there before, far enough away that the journey would involve real risk and a huge amount of time and effort and hassle. God put a star in the sky and following it would be uncomfortable and inconvenient. It would lead them to Herod's doorstep and possible peril. God put a star in the sky and they already had their own gods to listen to. They already worshiped in a certain way, believed certain things. They had their own ideas and their communities had their own ideas, their minds were full. God put a star in the sky And it wasn't really any of their business, wasn't really their responsibility as magicians and foreigners in a distant land. God put a star in the sky and the Magi had every reason to ignore it. And today they are not alone. What sign might God be putting in your life today? Like a distant light in a dark night sky, 
like a fuzzy glimmer of hope that looks different from everything around it, even if you don't fully understand it, and yet does not scream out for your attention that can be noticed or ignored. What sign might God be putting in your life today that might get overlooked in all the busyness of work and family and current events that you might see if you took a moment to breathe, to center yourself, to pray, to read a little scripture, to talk about faith with your brothers and sisters in Christ? What sign might God be putting in your life today that calls you to change the way you think about something, to leave certain parts of your life behind and to move ahead into a new adventure or journey that you might discover if you let yourself collapse in God's loving arms, truly trusted that you are beloved and let God become Lord over every aspect of your life, not just the ones you most easily hand over. Because God is a God of new life and new beginnings and healing. What sign that you are more than your mistakes? What sign that you are more than your bad habits? What sign that you are more than your struggles, more than your reputation, more than your resume, more than your diagnosis, more than your age, that you are important enough to be called by God by name? What sign might God be putting in your life today to suggest that you are called to do something great, even and especially if it is hard? Because God made you amazing and gifted and created and capable so that you don't have to settle or sell yourself short or dream small. What sign might God be putting in your life that you might be able to make a meaningful difference in a world that seems too big to be beyond your influence? Against all the odds, with every reason not to be called and every reason to ignore their calling, those magicians noticed God's star put in the sky for them. They opened themselves to the possibility that God might have a word for them. They humbled themselves enough to listen to something new and very different. They invested time and effort to follow. They took a chance on God, and they ended up meeting Jesus. They ended up being among the first to meet Jesus. They ended up experiencing God in their lives in a very powerful and personal way. They got to be part of the greatest story of all time, remembered thousands of years later. Remembered not primarily for their foibles, not primarily for who they were before that moment, but for their amazing faith. And as a witness and example of what is possible when we are willing and able to pay attention and to respond. So let us look into the sky of our lives and see God's light shining there for us. Amen. Please stand and join in affirming what we believe with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. to me all you that are weary or carrying hairy burdens and I will give you rest. 
Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. According to Luke, when our risen Lord was at table with his disciples, he took the bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him. This is the Lord's table. Our Savior invites all those who trust him to share the feast that he has prepared. And so let us pray. Holy God, we praise you. Let the heavens be joyful and the earth be glad. We bless you for creating the whole world, for your promises to your people Israel, and for Jesus Christ in whom your fullness dwells. Born of Mary, he shares our life. Eating with sinners, he welcomes us. Guiding his children, he leads us. Visiting the sick, he heals us. Dying on the cross, he saves us. Risen from the dead, he gives new life, and living with you, he prays for us. With thanksgiving, we take this bread and this cup and proclaim the death and resurrection of our Lord. Receive our sacrifice of praise. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us that this meal may be for each one of us a communion in the body and blood of our Lord. Make us one with Christ and with all who share this feast. Unite us in faith. Encourage us with hope. Inspire us to love that we may serve as your faithful disciples until we feast at your table in glory. We praise you, eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your word made flesh, in the holy and life-giving spirit, now and forever. Amen. The Lord Jesus, on the night of his arrest, took bread, and after giving thanks to God, he broke it, saying, Take, eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Drink of it, all of you, in remembrance of me. Whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's saving death until he comes again. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. We thank you, O God, that through word and sacrament you've given us your Son, who is the true bread from heaven and food for eternal life. So strengthen each one of us in your service that all our daily living will show our thanks through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord and Savior, in whose name we pray. Amen. And then as we continue in prayer, I do have a few uh, concerns to share this morning. First, uh, Shannon Buchanan has sent word to us asking for prayers for her close friend, Chris, who um, is on a vent now for double lung clots due to COVID and has three young children at home. So prayers for healing and prayers for the rest of the family. Prayers for Carol Robinson, who was out to dinner with the Chat Chicks on New Year's Eve and had um, a bit of a health 
emergency that we don't have uh, enough information about yet to really know what's going on. Uh, prayers for Kathy and Betty and their bereavement and the family of Bill Triller after his uh, sudden loss. They have um, at least tentatively set his service dates out in June. So um, due to the COVID spike and the distances for their family members, they are, are just choosing to wait. So we'll have more information as that approaches. Prayers for the Eccles family. They had been quarantining because Eric had COVID and now Colin is positive and it's just a roller coaster for everybody. And continued prayers for Raul, who I'm glad to hear is improving. Are there other things to remember this morning? Virginia has something. The people that were affected by the fires in Colorado, uh, my niece and her husband were among those people. They were evacuated, and luckily, they had a home to return to, but mm. there's many people who haven't, so concern and thanks. So Virginia asks for uh, prayers as a concern and a thank you in involving all those who've been affected by the wildfires in Colorado, but in particular for her niece and her niece's husband who were evacuated, but then whose home was, was still there for them to return to later. Are there other things to remember this morning? Okay. And what's your co-worker's name again? Donovan. Um, Doug asks for prayers uh, for his co-worker, Jonathan's father, who had some surgery, came through the surgery well, but then uh, became unable to keep food down and ended up back in the emergency room quickly uh, afterwards. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for all the many ways in which you invite unlikely people to be part of your story and part of your family. We thank you for the ways that you look at us and see something more than we see. We thank you for a depth and breadth of love for each of us as individuals that we can't even fully comprehend. We thank you for your work in the world and in our lives and in our own community and homes. Lord, we pray that when you speak to us, in whatever way you speak to us, that we would have an openness to see it, to hear it, to feel it, to know it. That when you put a star in the sky of our lives, that we would see the hope that that offers us and not just go about our business as if it wasn't there. Lord, we hand to you all of those who are on our minds and in our hearts today. Lord, we pray for Shannon's friend, Chris, for Chris's healing and the struggle uh, with COVID, that he'd be healed and able to return home to his three children. We pray for Carol with concern over what has happened this weekend and I hope that you will speed her recovery and guide her treatment. Pray for all of those who are bereaved today, in particular, Kathy and Betty and Bill's family, asking that you would continue to hold them in the palm of your hands. We pray for Sandy and her long and difficult struggle after her surgery. We pray for the Eccles as COVID has reached their home and now Another di is diagnosed with it as well, with all of the health concern, but also all of the inconvenience and the hassle that that entails. We pray for continued healing for Raul, that he would find strength and encouragement in you. We pray for Jonathan's father in the wake of his surgery with this new wrinkle and possible complication, that he would also be able to go home soon and be well. We pray for all of those who've been impacted by the fires in Colorado. We pray for all of those who are now unexpectedly homeless and don't know where they're going to go. We pray for those who have lost many things, 
And then we pray also for those who were fortunate enough to be able to go home, including Virginia's niece and her husband. And then we hand you also the concerns that we have not named aloud but weigh heavy on our hearts, knowing that we can trust them to you. We ask all these things in the name of the one who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And then please join in singing our closing hymn, We Three Kings of Orient Are, which can be found in the back of the bulletin. Guide 
peace in believing, that you might abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Alleluia and amen.